Today I'm going to show you how to create this trippy kaleidoscopic infinite loop. The first half of this video will be focused on how to generate these colourful geometric patterns using a bunch of pre-built effects, and in the second half we will create the loop using expressions. In a large comp, create a new solid and add the CC particle systems effect. We'll worry about the actual properties later, but for now I will choose shaded sphere in particle type, lower the velocity, bring the gravity to zero, increase the opacity to 100%, and remove the colours and any variations. I'll rename this layer Particles. Create an adjustment layer and add a mirror effect, bringing the reflection centre to the middle of the comp. Set the reflection angle to 15 degrees. Duplicate the mirror effect, and set the reflection angle to 30 degrees. Duplicate the mirror effect three more times, with respective reflection angles of 60, 90, and 180. You should obtain a pattern that resembles a mandala. Next, add a curves effect to increase the contrast, add a glow effect, and then a fine edges effect. Make sure to check invert. The fine edges effect is important here, as it really emphasises the geometric features. To create the colours, I used a HitFilm plugin called Channel Time Shift, which shifts the separate colour channels forwards and backwards in time. To recreate this effect without using plugins, duplicate the pattern layer twice, offset the top layer forwards one frame, and the bottom layer backwards one frame. I suggest renaming these layers with a plus one and a minus one to not get confused. Then add the channel combiner effect to these three layers. The from setting should be set to lightness, and the to setting should be set to red, green or blue. Each layer should be set to a different colour. Then change the blending mode to screen to enjoy the colours. Finally, scale up the particle layer so that the pattern fits the comp. And that's how you create these beautiful mandala patterns. Obviously there are loads of tweaks and variations you can make. Turning off the fine edges effect gives you a different look. You can also change properties in the particle system. Because this layer has been duplicated twice, I suggest you parent the properties of the duplicates to the main layer using copy with property links or the property pick whip. Choosing a different particle type yields different patterns, as well as playing around with longevity, birth rate, opacity maps, etc. The possibilities are endless, so it's up to you to experiment until you find a style you like. Let's now create the infinite loop using these patterns we've generated. Before we do that, I'm just going to add the circle effect, invert the circle, and use the stencil alpha blending mode. This essentially masks out the centre of our pattern and allows us to make our tunnel. I'm going to export our patterns as a file, as I encountered problems nesting this comp into another comp. Bring the exported patterns into a new comp, enable time remapping, and enable expressions by alt-clicking the stopwatch. Let's write the following expression. This expression will select a random frame and freeze it. The random function alone will not work, as it produces a different random number for each frame. That's why we use a seed random function. The first parameter is a random seed, this can be any number, and the second parameter, true, makes sure it will produce only one random number for the duration of the layer. And for every layer we duplicate, we will obtain a different frame. Let's duplicate this layer, change the blending mode to screen, and add an expression for its scale. I want every subsequent layer to be x times smaller than the previous one. In this example, the factor will be 3.6, but it may be different for you depending on the size of your circle mask. The expression is as follows. Basically, this expression looks for the scale of the layer above it, because we subtracted 1 from the index, and divides it by our scale factor. Duplicate this layer a few times and extend the layers to the end of the comp. Let's animate the zoom. Create a null object and parent all the layers to it. Enable expressions under the scale property and write the following expression. S1 is the start scale and S2 is the end scale. I set the start scale to 100% and the end scale is calculated in order to reach the end of the tunnel. We multiply the start scale by the scale factor to the power of the number of layers in the comp minus 1, as we want to neglect the null layer. T1 and T2 are the start and end time of a loop. I've set them to 0 and the duration of a comp respectively. And here is the bulk of our expression, which is an if-else statement. Basically, what we want to do is to exponentially increase our scale from S1 to S2. If we weren't using expressions, we would just keyframe our start and end scale, and use the exponential scale option in the keyframe assistant menu in order to obtain the desired effect. The function we are looking for is of the type f of t is equal to a times exponential of k times t. We know that f of t1 is s1, and f of t2 is s2. If we assume that t1 is equal to 0, 
but we have f of 0 is equal to s1, and therefore a is equal to s1. We can now solve for k. In the final expression, some of the terms are slightly different, but that's the gist of it for the mathematically inclined viewers. Last thing to point out in this expression is that the final output is a 2 by 1 array, as the scale property has two dimensions. You can now duplicate as many layers as you want, and the expression will automatically adjust itself and will steadily zoom until the end of the comp. The last step is to make the sequence loop, and for that we will have to make some changes to our expressions. The first change is that our starting frame should already be zoomed into our second pattern. In our null scale expression, I will multiply our s1 by the scale factor. Now we want our last frame to be identical to the first frame. This means that the patterns of the last few layers need to be identical to the patterns in these first layers. I can count 5 patterns here, which means that the first 5 layers need to be the same as the last 5 layers. I'm going to go to the fifth from last layer and change the time remapping expression using the following code. The fifth from last layer will take the time remapping value from the first pattern, the fourth from last layer will take the time remapping value from the second pattern, and so on and so forth. Once we've done that, I'm going to delete the layers below, and duplicate the layer with our new expression. The last thing to do is to go to our scale expression in our null and change our s2 which is our ending scale. Instead of minus 1, we need to put minus 6, as we want it to stop 5 layers before the end. And now you have an infinite loop which is fully customizable. If you want to add more patterns, all you have to do is duplicate the layers. And if you want to adjust the length of the loop, you can change the comp settings. Subscribe for more tutorials and creative experiments, or you can follow me on Instagram to see them there as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.